Hello everyone, peace be upon you. I hope you have watched my previous presentation on IPA. Today I will talk about the process of analysis. I assume that uh, you have already watched other videos about IPA and phenomenology on my channel. However, if you have not, then please watch those videos before learning about the process of analysis. In addition to your sound knowledge about the theoretical foundation of IPA, one thing you must remember uh, is that IPA studies, uh, you must elaborate well about the process of analysis. This is very important for the readers to know how you are looking, uh, looking at or looking into the data, how you are making sense of it, how you are using your reflexivity, how you are understanding participants' perspectives, how you are validating your, their responses, and uh, how you are emerging themes, how you are describing it, and how you are interpreting those themes. So these are some questions that you must have on your mind uh, while writing the process of analysis. Researchers have provided uh, different approaches to do interpretive analysis. In this presentation, I will talk about three popular uh, processes of analysis in IPA studies. However, in my opinion, it is not necessary that you should follow one of them. Uh, your own understanding about your topic, the context of your study, participants, uh, your epistemological position, and uh, the data you have, it is very important that you have your own understanding about it. You can write your process uh, while employing and modifying the steps presented by other authors uh, but giving a clear rationale that why and how you are doing your process of analysis. Uh, well, uh, before having a brief and precise look at process of analysis, let us first prepare the transcript for analysis. If you have audio recording of the interview, then you should first listen the recording carefully before transcribing it. It will help a lot when you transcribe the interview as you have already refreshed your memory about the interview while listening it and then you will transcribe the interview. But do not miss any probing questions and answers and other important verbal and nonverbal expressions uh, that you find in the recording. Now read the whole transcript and make corrections if required uh, to make it more clear and easy to read. Then have a final reading to start your analysis. Uh, this seems little intensive uh, but it is worth doing because you will find yourself easy and familiar with your own data. Now uh, for example if you don't have a recording then you must transcribe the interview same day when you conducted it uh, so that you do not lose information. Uh, then it will be good if you first write participant responses to the questions and then uh, whatever uh, you have on your mind that can add information uh, when you are probing. Uh, but again, this first transcription uh, you should do, you should spend some time on it to read it again and again uh, before finalizing it for analysis. Now I will talk about process of analysis. However, I will only describe steps in this presentation and you can watch other videos related to coding and clustering on my channel. Uh, to begin with process of analysis, uh, you must uh, own your process of analysis. Uh, remember it. I, I have already mentioned that whenever you are writing your process of analysis, you must have clear understanding of what you are doing. So get hold of it. It is you who should monitor and report the process as fully and truthfully as possible. You can do so only if you have clarity about your research question and your epistemological position that you would use to represent the data and the, and the communication through interpretation that you will use uh, while uh, explaining your data analysis. 
the analysis is a rigorous process and it happens all the time since you started using university uh, your investigation the process of analysis that you employ while reading the transcript is not independent of what you have done since the day one so uh, as a qualitative researcher you are engaged in analysis when you rationalize the topic of the study when you finalize the research question when you worked on methodology when you conducted interview extra extra while analyzing a working transcript you reduce the volume of raw information but very carefully because you should not lose the relevant relevant information uh, while doing this through the data uh, you identify significant patterns and you search for the concepts and meanings and then you communicate the essence of these meanings uh, with a theoretical framework now uh, to do analysis you should know that it involves three interconnected things to do first is description of the data that is a detailed rendering of individuals and their experience in order to depict what is going on in their lives then an interpretation that is making an understanding of people and activities making sense of the information related to their experiences in their social and cultural context and then comes the analysis analysis is to draw inferences and form conclusions about what was learned from their experience about their lives and how it answers your research questions so what is happening how is it happening and why is it happening these are the important questions that will help you to do analysis and contextualize your findings and then a logical flow of description interpretation and analysis will help you to write a coherent discussion well before continuing further let me tell you something about the backbone of qualitative analysis and that is reflexivity it is not easy to define exactly uh, what is reflexivity however there are few things that you should keep in mind while conducting analysis and that will help you to to reflexively engage with your own analysis uh so so you should ask yourself how much you know about yourself because it is very important for example uh if you know what political social or cultural biases you may have it will be easier to detach yourself while doing analysis and internal dialogue with yourself and questioning your own perspectives while doing interpretation and bracketing your presumptions and prejudices and giving a, a paramount consideration to the participant voices is very important and that is how reflexivity will work here well if you have understood whatever i told by now then definitely we can proceed further to see steps of analysis um, so first we will begin with mostak uh, i will present step wise information uh, about the process of analysis uh, that mostak has provided uh i will add some tips here and there to make it clear and to help you understand it okay here you see first and second step is to transcribe the interview and read it thoroughly and i have talked about it uh, in my previous slides the third step is to read the transcript again and highlight or extract the significant statements that you decide on the basis of your search questions or your search objectives the fourth step is to read and gain an understanding of those selected statements or verbatims you see that third and fourth steps are called horizontalizations that means understanding data through a phenomenological reduction where you reduce the number of words replace the vocabulary with similar terms and you place equal value on each statement or pieces of data however please remember not to lose the actual meaning while doing phenomenological reduction 
Horizontalization is the way to understand the significant statements without being judgmental or biased. Therefore, bracketing should be done properly while understanding the significant statements as it appears in the data. So you can just uh, remember uh, uh, whatever I said about reflexivity uh, in your research. That will help you here uh, doing horiz horizontalization. Now, as you already have significant statements, uh, develop clusters of meanings in the form of themes from these statements. If you have done step three and four carefully and thoroughly and flexibly, it will be helpful in proceeding to step five, six and seven. In step six, you will provide a textual description of the themes informing about what is it. And in step seven, you will ground those textual description in the context by writing the situations and the context that influence the experience described in step six. So step six and step seven are what and how of the experience and they are interconnected as well. In step eight, you will write about the experience and knowledge of the context and situation. Even though you have already been doing it in your memo book or notebook, where you make notes while reading the significant statements, uh, step eight is always critical and it is important. Here again, you will use your bracketing to explore the understudy experience and being aware of your perspectives on it. Moving to step nine, you will write a thorough description and the essence of the phenomena while using and reflecting on textual and structural descriptions of the significant statements. And in step 10, you will locate the common experience that you find uh, among the participants. And then in step 11, you will find and interpret the underlying structure of the phenomena. So in these 11 steps, uh, you will be able to gain an in-depth understanding of the phenomena. Now we will see another author, Kolesi, uh, who gave nine steps of phenomenological analysis. According to Kolesi, after reading transcribed interviews repeatedly, researchers have an idea of the participant's description of the phenomena, so he should read it thoroughly to extract significant statements. Then, uh, first step is to spell out the meaning of each significant statement, creating formulating meanings. Then, organize the aggregate formalized meanings into cluster of themes. Afterwards, you will write an exhaustive description of those themes and then you will identify the structure of the phenomena. And for validation, you will return back to the participant, uh, maybe uh, through follow-up interviews and you will validate your description of the phenomena. If you will get new information during the validation process, you will incorporate that information into your description and then you will finalize your revised structure of the phenomena. Uh, now, let us have a look what Jonathan Smith suggests about uh, IPA. According to Smith, a first step is to transcribe a single interview. The second step is to read it multiple times and see similarities and differences, echoes, amplifications and contradictions in it. And yes, as I always say, it is good to write a memo about it. Third step, according to Smith, is to extract significant statements and write initial notes or comments against each statement. So it, it would be just like writing a memo. This commentary will be trans transformed into concise phrases and that we say higher level of abstract conception. Fourth step is to cluster the initial meanings that you have already derived from the significant statements into themes. In the fifth step, read your commentary and themes together to make sense of it, to see the connections. And then simultaneously, you will make connections while refining and clustering themes. Then produce a table of themes and sub-themes and at the end, write a description and interpretation of the themes 
while incorporating relevant verbatims as evidence wherever they are needed. Well, you have seen three authors providing their process of phenomenological analysis and I have just described the steps they have given um, um, uh, in this presentation. And now in this slide, I am providing steps of analysis in a simple way. And you can relate it with whatever you have learned by now in this presentation. So now just to summarize in a simple way, first step is to transcribe the data. Second step is to read it thoroughly and repeatedly. It, it is something like getting familiar with the data. Third thing or third step is to extract significant statements that respond to your research question and that can reveal the lived experience of the participants. Step number four, read and quote the statements, quotes that can convey the meanings of the sentences or the statements being coded. And then organize the quotes with aggregate meanings into cluster of themes. Then write a thick description of each theme using textual and structural descriptive techniques. And then match, that is go back to the things that match your description with the themes and significant statements. It is a sort of validation that you will do here. Step seven, you can repeat after step five as well to get a reverse check of the themes and codes and significant statements, it will also be helpful in validating your process. Well, uh, now a key to good analysis uh, is actually how you validate your finding. There may be several ways, but uh, it is important that you are able to maintain accuracy uh, that is called validity and consistency uh, that you can say the logical flow of the data uh, while presenting your findings. Here, for example, I am providing you few techniques given by the researchers to validate findings. For example, uh, validation of findings uh, may be done by returning to the study participants, uh, for example, through follow-up interviews. Another way is to use your own, I mean, researchers' insight to ensure the accuracy of the data and analysis. And yet another way, is to get intersubjective agreement by reaching other expert judges uh, to reflect upon findings. So you can choose one of them or you can choose multiple way of validating uh, your findings. Um, validation in qualitative research means accuracy and it is important to work on it throughout your research. Uh, so what you can ensure to, uh, to see is that your interview guide is validated properly and it is it has been proved as a good tool to gain accurate data. You should also code your data yourself and you can get it coded by another researcher to get an intercoded consensus. You can also discuss the codes and reach a consensus, but if there is no consensus, you can check for the differences and see if you need a follow-up interview. And follow-up interviews may add or revise your findings as well. So these are a few of the validation techniques that you can have on your mind while writing your process of analysis. And now this is a checklist um, that can help you to see if you are doing it right. So check your uh, analysis that uh, if you find inconsistency, or if, you see, if you see there is a flaw in argumentation, or you see there is an implausible categorization you have done, uh, you see that there is an inadequate evidence and also see if you have your assumptions that are questionable. Um, if you, you see there is a lack of connections between the themes or you, 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 you have uh, checked your biases and uh, you have seen some unreflective interpretation that it means that these points needed to be addressed in your process of analysis. Um, thank you very much. I hope uh, you will watch my videos on phenomenology, IPA, process of analysis and coding and then you will learn more and faster. Um, I will come up with an example in another presentation. By then, stay connected, stay safe and stay blessed. Thank you.